Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good to have you all back with us here to another very exciting, exotic episode of Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live here from our mildly and moderately tropical metropolis of Honolulu, Hawaii. And today it's the dudes about the broods, <laughs> and the dudes are DeSoto Brown and Martin as and the Martin. host, and we have our colleague Timothy Schuler as our guest today. So what's that thing about the brutes? <laughs> the brutes. Um, well, we, uh, I recently wrote an article called, uh, titled The Brutes on the Beach, uh, and it was very much uh, inspired by um, an assignment both from, from an editor but also some of the recent uh, shows that you guys have been doing on brutalism. Um, there's definitely a trend worldwide to be thinking about this uh, architectural style. Um, and reappreciating it. Yes, exactly. And so we, I uh, got um, basically asked by uh, one of the editors at Flux Magazine, Matt Deneef, uh, to kind of try and untangle what uh, brutalism means to mm. Hawaii's built environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, if we can right. get the picture one up here, there it is, uh, right there's there. There's the magazine, and on the picture one, here is the cover of it, and one of the pictures he used in a little description. And at the top left is what you mentioned, uh, how we stumbled around and into tropical brutalism yeah. uh, every now and then. And the next page, please, is uh, uh, me having, you know, when Tim was kindly delivering the complimentary copy to me. I was overly excited and took yeah. these <laughs> snapshots here to share with everyone. And so this gives you an overview how actually the article, which we can only simulate, but if you would have it and flip through, this is how it looks like. And I have to say, it's a very appealing composition, uh, very well done as far as writing, of course, but then going along with the images, it's yeah. very captivating. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to read. Yeah, so Tim, you know what, before we go any further, tell us about what Flux Magazine is. Oh, sure. Uh, Flux is a, a triannual uh, magazine uh, published here in Hawaii, published out of Chinatown mm -hmm. um, by a group called Nella Media Group, and it's essentially a magazine about Hawaii. It tells um, Hawaii stories. Um, as you mentioned, it's beautiful. The art direction is incredible. Um, I've heard people describe it as, you know, one of the best designed objects coming out of Hawaii <laughs> right yeah. now, which yeah. uh, I'm uh, absolutely thrilled and proud to be a part of the team that puts it together. Um, and I think the thing I like most about it, as evidenced by this story on brutalism, which is something that, other than the two of you, no one really is talking about too much. There's certainly not um, newspaper articles being mm -hmm. written about it. We don't right. have an architecture critic uh, yeah, in right. Hawaii. Right. And um, so I love the fact that they are really sort of kind of trying to, um, you know, turn over the rocks and look for stories that people aren't mm -hmm. talking about. So much of the media here is focused on, um, you know, stories that are, if not uh, clean and shiny, at least, you know, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> attractive and yeah. easy in a good light. Oh, and, yeah, of course. And, of course. Um, yeah. This magazine has done a good job, I think, of doing design stories, but also just uh, really fascinating mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So go, let's go to the next slide here and talk. take advantage of having you here and hearing sort of the stories behind the story, mm -hmm. and especially, I mean, writing is, your writing is great and it's explicit. I mean, it's still, I, I think it's great because it's sort of implicit within being explicit, so. And it actually made us sort of, you know, go off and, and think about the mm -hmm. article in different ways, mm -hmm. and we're gonna take advantage of that and we actually are. make it a little trilogy, this yes, being the will. first one where you tell us more about the article and then De Soto is going to go off and tell us what he gets out of the article, yeah. and he's doing this in a very sneaky way, right? When do you? Well, plan? yeah, because uh, Martin is going back to Germany, mm -hmm. and when Martin is in transit, I will be on my own, totally uncontrolled, oh, and I will get oh. to do my take on tropical That's brutalism. It's going to be trouble. It's going to be trouble. Big trouble. Soto in the pilot seat. Exactly. Look out, exactly. world. Look out, world. And then there will be my revenge will be one when I <laughs> hopefully have landed, you know. Yes, that's right. That's you right. got the final word then, huh? Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be fun, but, but again, it's like, well, whereas the writing is greatly sort of um, implicitly explicit, 
the, the pictures are obviously um, always sort of implicit, and it's up to the viewer to basically make up. There's a little connotations, of course, that, mm -hmm. but they describe more the actual thing, what you see. But maybe you can tell us a little bit. And I'm, I'm particularly in, in excited to hear why the first pictures uh, that one sees are actually these. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, well, I can only speak to um, some of you know the role that I played, and I'm not in the in the studio whenever they're you know doing the final pagination. Mm -hmm. But I do know. What, so what you're seeing here is actually um, that is the side of a parking garage mm. in, in downtown, um, actually just adjacent to the exactly. studio where, where, we, where we are where right we are now. Filming right now. We, we, um, the soda walks by there every he time. Does. Because he does. He does. I was right. just looking at it minutes mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I think this. Uh, I think one of the reasons. Uh, they led with this as a it's an incredibly beautiful photo we should mention John Hook is mm -hmm. the photographer for everything in the magazine mm -hmm. um, uh, on these brutalist buildings uh, but I think this in particular uh, at least what it says to me is it, it gets at a bunch of different things one is the ways in which brutalism was very quickly uh, kind of transmogrified into the Hawaiian uh, context to try and uh, speak to this specific place so I think here uh, just the things that I pick up from it are just kind of the falling palm fronds. Also, there's a kind of very geologic quality to it. Um, it's highly textural. Uh, I think you can't quite see it in this photo, but also the the tone, the size of the aggregates that, that is used in the concrete, oh. but also the tone and color yeah. of it also yeah. is very related to Hawaii. And I think they wanted to uh, try and kind of capture all of that yeah. as the lead into the story. And, and we can see that more in the next picture here. Right. And mm -hmm. the previous one, I should have done a better job and basically go to my front door beach, which is our front door beach because we're both Waikikians, sure. and put it in the sand and basically <laughs> show a sort of analogy to. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. That's that basically, okay, concrete yeah. is yeah. is sand, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's just aggregates basically glued together. Mm -hmm. I mean, very yeah. sort of dilatantly said, right? But here sure. you were saying you can't, but here you can see the fine grain. Yeah. The, and I believe the picture on the right is one of yours that you took. It is. It is. That is um, that dojo in Kalihi oh, yeah. that you, that yeah, yeah, Desoto yeah, yeah, originally yeah, yeah. turned me on to. It's, a, it's an incredible building. Um, Sachio Otani that's right, that's did right. it, who did some incredible works actually in Japan as well, um, I found out in, in researching this piece. But that I think this juxtaposition is perfect because it shows the ways in which even when they were not intentionally mm -hmm. trying to evoke these kind of you know floral forms mm -hmm. or these kind of vegetated mm -hmm. forms uh, by leaving the concrete uh, showing the the wood grain pattern Correct. of the board mm -hmm. form right. they were still I think architects in Hawaii and outside mm -hmm. were trying to comment on the ways in which natural materials like wood were actually still yeah. really crucial yeah, right. to making a brutalist yeah. building. And you know, I think the interesting thing with these two is that on one hand, on the left side, we've got something intentionally made and sculpted. Mm -hmm. On the right hand side, we're using a natural form, just as you said, because the concrete pressed against it mm -hmm. when it was wet. Mm -hmm. And so this is by happenstance, but that building does have a lot of plywood texture. Yes that yeah. they intentionally mm -hmm. left. They didn't yeah. grind it off and, and make it smooth. And it wasn't done like we frequently sort of get amused about the sort of attempt of these no. days where they throw a form liner into Correct. the concrete mm -hmm. and make a very literal analogy to some kind of leave mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you can only see that one thing, which is a very postmodern approach. Mm -hmm. This is way more in the in the modern approach mm -hmm. that you might, you know, see some mm -hmm. Something from you know plant life, but you don't have to, right? So mm -hmm. it's very sort of you know implied and, and not explicit. So yep. it just leaves interpretation, which I think is is sort of appealing and makes it more timeless. You know what I also like about the the form on the left is it looks like a water pattern in sand. Yeah, yeah. And this aggregate mm -hmm. is sand. Mm -hmm. So water flowing over it might have made a pattern similar wow. to that. But now this is permanent in the building. And, and we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're moving on to the next picture. And I, I can use this because we talk about some of the masters of brutalism mm -hmm. along the way. And this, what you just said, this sort of reminds me of one of the ma American masters, Frank Lloyd Wright. He yeah. basically said concrete is liquid stone. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's pretty right. much exactly that. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So we here, talking talking next door, this is the other next door to us where we're right. sitting here. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is this building here. So tell us, you know, again, what, what do these images say in regards to your research and investigation? Well, I think, I mean, there's so much to say about this building in particular, mm -hmm. as you guys mm -hmm. well know. Um, but this, I think, you know, this was one of the 
one of the first, but also I think remains one of the best examples of tropical brutalism here in mm -hmm. Hawaii. Um, it, it, you know, it, it was intended to remake downtown in this kind of modern image, mm -hmm. um, and I think very much did that. But I also think it's just it's uh, I think it was um, just an incredible collaboration between the landscape architect Lawrence Halperin, who yeah. is legendary now. Uh, this might be one of his only works in Hawaii. I'm not I, sure I about that. I actually think so. As, I, as yeah. ironic as that is, and yeah. as sad. Yeah. And even that one, I, you give me an idea to go deeper into that on my pitch. Yeah, you know, yeah. So I will, I will do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think but, it is. Yeah, working with uh, the two design architects and then the landscape architect, they've crafted something that is you know, sort of quintessentially brutalist with mm. the hypnotic grid of windows, the, mm -hmm. um, the three separate but very Correct. related volumes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The you know everything is sort of top heavy in that yeah. uh, traditionally brutalist yes. way. We right. can go to the next picture because there's a good illustration of top heavy. Mm -hmm. Right there we go. There yep. we go. Yeah, the Castle and Cook building is in fact bigger on the top than at the bottom, but the bottom does have these flaring out sort of support like. Mm -hmm. uh, I I extrusions mm -hmm. from what would normally be the rest of the building is completely mm -hmm. perpendicular. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And by the way, this is the financial plaza of the Pacific. We didn't say that at the beginning, yeah, but that's yeah. what this yes. is. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And sort of, we're talking about texture, but sort of more performative texture, I believe, you know, on a large building scale. And, I, you know, I, I, I cannot not make sort of you know, um, uh, sort of an analysis about the building performance beyond the visual, mm -hmm. the, the sort of thermal comfort. So I probably do that, or we do that in, in my spin. But right, let's move right. on uh, and look more at other sort of aspects of texture and give the next slide for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is uh, building the American Savings Bank Tower. Mm -hmm. um, I forget, I believe this was maybe built uh, just one or two years, completed yeah. one or two years after it was. Financial Plaza. This, this was in place by 1973. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, um, but yeah, as you can see, still very brutalist. Their, their buildings are catty corner, catty corner to each other, um, but a completely different feel in terms of how the concrete is treated with these, mm -hmm. the bush hammering, these very mm -hmm. jagged mm -hmm. ribs. Um, very, yeah. that's very brutalist. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and it's a different color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing, the other thing that this really brings up is concrete is not all the same color. Concrete is not made of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. So that in this case, we've got a light sandy colored concrete instead of a dark gray concrete. It's probably so they're both due to coral. That's exactly used, except, yeah. basal, except basal, right? right. Yeah. So the different raw materials yeah. went into it, and so they're both brutalist, yeah. but they have a very different feeling because they're different colors. Mm -hmm. And, and that wasn't incidental to it. Wasn't just because they were mm -hmm. building in Hawaii. It was very mm -hmm. strategic mm -hmm. on the architect's part. I uh -huh. found out. To you know, they went to painstaking measures to mix the mm, aggregate yeah, to get yeah. the mm, color that mm. they wanted, which was interesting. And so you, since you named the uh, the owner and the name of the building, I think we got to do another show, a follow up show, because they're actually moving into a new building that they just finished. Mm. Oh, that's which right. Which is mainly out of concrete. Right, so this right. is interesting that's to see right. whether it's evolved or not. Yeah. So that's let's do one right. About that that is a very that. and that's yes, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. But let's. Stay with in the old era in the next picture, and um, I want to say, you know, um, this era and trying to avoid to say style because that's sort mm -hmm. of too stigmatizing, sure. I think. But that era um, is pretty much up for being on the radar of a historic registry because yeah. it's 50 years and the Plaza of the Pacific had just turned, so it's mm -hmm. supposed to be already. But as we know, being on the register it doesn't mean it's protected from demise and being demolished, right? So right. what it needs is what you greatly do is basically raise public awareness and make people reappreciate it in best case, or at least yeah. tolerate it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So um, I hope so. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. You, you do a great job in, in starting to get this public um, you know, discourse. And, and sort of this building here, we were like looking at you know, here you can you can see this sort of like evolution that um, here the the glass. I mean, you DeSoto at the very beginning you were categorizing you know brutalism in a great, very simple way so people can comprehend it and saying well modernism was maximizing the openings, and then the mainland 
uh, was doing that with glass, and here in best cases at the mid-century, easy breezy, they were doing it with open openings. Right, mm -hmm. right. And then brutalism was sort of diminishing that. Absolutely. So minimizing the openings and maximizing the opacity. Mm -hmm. so, and that, that's pretty mm -hmm. much. And then they were playing with sort of with the interstitial space yep. between the inside and the outside. So here you can see that the glass is sort of slowly but surely getting more you know, flush again mm -hmm. with, with the concrete. Yeah, right? not as recessed, but the, in, in that correct. case. And, correct. And the next picture is, is uh, what you told uh, us that was one of the first pieces where you got intrigued or aware of tropical realism. And here it's where it's almost flush again with the concrete. And mm -hmm. you, you told me that it's seemed to you almost like a canvas that really sort of brings out the green yeah. very much. Yeah. I, I keep sharing yeah. the yeah. my oldest son Joey's, you know, um, fascination with brutalism when he came here and he said, you know, this contrast of the gray and the green is so mm -hmm. cool mm -hmm. and so, you know, intriguing. Yeah. 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 And this, yeah, you can't, uh, from far away, it looks a little bit more like the kind of glassy office mm -hmm. building. But if you go to this, this is the uh, originally called the Haseko building. I think it's called the Milani building now, um, named for the street there. Uh, if you go up to it, mm -hmm. it there are portions of it. They have these kind of poured concrete um, like seating wells and little mm -hmm. pathways and mm -hmm. all these different little mm -hmm. concrete um, areas out exterior to the building yeah, yeah. and they really because there's such heavy plantings in that area mm -hmm. it really starts to almost feel like ruins or something like that even yeah, though yeah. the building's yeah, only yeah. 30 or 40 years old this Which, also won a design award I, from the local aia yeah, yeah 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 no and that is actually very like very help -y, although you know it's his sort of signature yeah. but not in his own right yeah, but yeah. it's like in his tradition yeah and one of the things that i think is different between uh when brutalism came in it is, of course, very stark and hard and, and mm. uh, brutal, but at the same time, inevitably, they always made room to incorporate greenery. Mm -hmm. Unlike older buildings, which, which occupied the entire lot out yeah. to the side, out to the sidewalk, yeah. brutalist buildings intentionally put plants, yeah, trees, yeah. foliage as a contrast, as a softening, yeah. and like you said, mm -hmm. th this almost is like a background to display the greenery against, or like mm -hmm. your son said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then you were. You, you said you want to bring in one building that's maybe sort of the like the most um, uh, the starkest embodiment mm, of the archetype. Of the, of yeah. The archetype. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. let's jump to that one in the next picture here. The giant sandcastle. Yeah. <laughs> You're in right. Christmas mood. Right? Oh, Waikiki. That's what they do in Waikiki <laughs> for Christmas, but not everywhere else. But yeah. yeah so yeah. so what is this? Uh, well, this is the uh, Prince Kuhio Federal Building, um, right downtown, right on the edge of downtown, um, along Ala Moana Boulevard, mm. um, designed by architects Hawaii, uh, but specifically Joe Farrell, who was young at the time. I found out, um, and he was he was the you know the lead design architect mm. on this mm. building. It, the the store the building itself has a crazy story in terms mm. of they moved the whole thing. It got redesigned, like mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. I think six or seven different times. Mm -hmm. um, but this final, the final design is incredibly brutalist. I think it's probably the most, if the Financial Plaza of the Pacific is one of the earliest and mm -hmm. best, I think this kind of exemplifies what people who were working in Hawaii mm -hmm. did with that, with mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. era's mm -hmm. uh, approach to, to building. Yeah. And let's, let's look at a detail, let's jump to the next slide. Mm -hmm. And we're saying we yeah. should have, while we were like chatting before the show, we said we should have gone to the beach and brought <laughs> sand and our little forms. And, and you were saying the round towers we could just have literally like, made. Yes, you know? right. It's like just putting a little bucket, a pla plastic sand exactly. bucket. And yeah. So it's a very off. sort of stereotomic approach of carving out a mass, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what... Absolutely. And, and, and that one, it said you wanted to point out sort of probably it's idle. Yeah. or its main inspiration, and the architect has yeah. confirmed to you that it was. And, yeah. And there's more stories about the creators of the building, so let's yeah. jump to the next picture here. Yes. So this is the Government Service Center uh, in, I think the name may have changed now, but in Boston, mm. a major civic building in Boston done by Paul Rudolph, mm. uh, who is now considered, I mean, one of the American masters of, of brutalism. Uh, and I was astounded to find out that uh, I always thought the federal building had some, you know, it was, it seemed to be drawing on specifically his, mm -hmm. Rudolph's um, kind of style or approach. 
his manner of thinking, but I found out when I talked with Farrell that yes, indeed, uh, Farrell had actually interned in Rudolph's office in Florida. Mm, in the uh, early days. In the yeah. very, very early days. Uh, but that he was absolutely following his career uh, even after Farrell made the move to oh, Hawaii. Okay. He was following um, Rudolph's career when he went to Yale, and he specifically mentioned this building uh, uh -huh. he definitely would have okay. seen published. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And that gets us to the next slide because there's an um, interesting, uh, well, these are more details of it, but let's Same move on to the, to the next slide here, 14 already. Because there's an interesting, I mean, you know, this is the beauty of journalism. And once you start, you know, it's like a continuous thread. And you, from one story, you stumble to the next one and so on, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we were investigating up at my employer's place you mm -hmm. know, at UH in our final show, and John Hera has shared with us his original design for the School of Architecture. And he also mainly writing about landscape. So this is interesting that there was a very, very heavy landscape connotation to the original yeah. building design, but yeah. even mm -hmm. more before that, and John basically told me that, and he will, I will make him talk more about it when mm -hmm. I will have a show with him in about three weeks. I'll ask him more because he said originally, guess who was basically uh, commissioned to design the School of Architecture building? Paul Rudolph. So there we go. Isn't that crazy, it's, Brian? That would have been incredible to see what that would have looked like. And, and the two pictures up there is an architecture school that he built on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing on the bottom right I will bring uh, in, in my pitch here, which is a book by a former colleague of mine in Arizona who wrote the book about that era that you were just uh, relating to, which was that, that Rudolph basically grew up in Florida and had his you know, first work in Florida. It was very sort of high modern and very tectonic. And then he moved up that coast and got more and more heavy. Yeah. So he came and from more basically urban. more urban. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he came from like sort of very ethereal, mm -hmm. very airy, very light to very ephemeral, you know, to very heavy. Yeah. It's interesting. So we're wondering, you know, I mean, obviously time wise, it must have been in the later area, but our sort of question is would he have reconnected to his roots mm -hmm. yeah. about tropical? And so hopefully John knows more. But um, it, th this sort of like more sort of this sort of, you know, differentiation between the stereotomic and the tectonic and the light and the heavy in brutalism as well um, inspired you to share a couple, actually two uh, more projects here. Let's go to the next slide here, which are on other islands, because it's not just here, the yeah. brutalism. Right. The epicenter is definitely downtown Honolulu, but it was amazing. I think that one of my favorite things about doing this piece was really finding just these just you know these isolated specimens mm -hmm. all over the place. I think my favorite might be uh, the Zippy's headquarter on King Street mm -hmm. is completely like mm -hmm. completely takes the yeah. the brutalist language yeah. Uh, yeah. in this little two story yeah but uh, little building. that's the yes, thing yes a tiny yes. little brutalist building right. yeah but mm -hmm. it's very funny. Um, but yeah, on Big Island um, and elsewhere, even at Waikiki, we have our own Brutalist Hotel building, yeah. also done by Joe Farrell. Mm -hmm. But here, this is, um, I forget the name of this resort, but it's in Co south of Kona. Um, and yeah, completely, I mean, it's, it's such an interesting contrast because it sits on the land so yes. lightly, mm -hmm. but then, you know, the closer you get, these, it still has these... Uh, very kind of broad-faced, monolithic, concrete yeah. walls, and they yeah. repeat in this mm -hmm. geometry uh, that goes across uh -huh. the coast. And it's it, again, yeah. it's that juxtaposition that I think actually makes it work. Yeah. 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 Even though you know the European architects probably thought that a resort done in this style was probably like anathema to the entire endeavor, but. <laughs> Well, it's, there's, it's a, there's, there's an even more famous project in regards to that, which is the next slide here. It's the Mauna Kea yes. one on, on the Big Island, yep. which you know many consider one of the marvels of, of modern architecture and actually sort of not like you know, mid-century modern, but, but later and sort of a, a very sort of an interesting tropical spin on on brutalism that is way more sort of framing views. So it's, it's less about the form, but it's more about the space, but it's inherently about concrete as that sort of um, containing material, right? Containing yeah. um, and holding human activity and, and event. Yeah. And you know, that was all easy breezy when it opened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I got to I go always, there. I always love to hear that. And it was yeah. all built like that intentionally. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. So it, it feels right on the cusp there. It feels. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. this was 1965, and it's just uh -huh. you know you can feel people sliding into just these big concrete yeah. buildings. But it yeah. even today, luckily, um, maybe not in the guest rooms, but this is still one of the most yeah. easy breezy hotels yeah, yeah. in Hawaii. Yes, yes it is. Amazing. And and if you have been watching the show, this is not a surprise how much sympathetic we are with that. And maybe we go to the last slide here to that regards. And by now, yeah. DeSoto can talk better and more about this than I myself, because he's been He's been, you know. he's been taught. Oh, yeah, and he taught himself. So uh. Well, this is, again, we, we go back to, we like to end with a lot of uh, sort of a hopeful or optimistic uh, view to the future. And Martin is a professor at, at UH, and his students have uh, yearly projects, annual projects. This is one of them, Primitiva 2. This is one. This yeah, is Primitiva 1. That's fine. Pardon me. Just to make it basically um, make some make some points about it, it's open, it's easy breezy, it is open to the air, it incorporates uh, a lot of open spaces for the residents, it is also a place where you can buy things, buy food, it is built so that it is um, more communal rather than individual, and we've got a central core which gives light, which brings light and air into the entire thing. And it's also, um, in the lower left corner, we also see the plans for making uh, smaller, skinnier buildings rather than huge monolithic mm -hmm. concrete structures is something else that's come out of this, mm -hmm. this looking towards the future. And, and that's, again, yeah. we're, we're wanting to go in that direction. Yeah, and it's last, but not at all least, it's out of concrete. I was gonna say, yeah. that's why it, yeah. makes a, it makes a little cameo in the article for that reason. We talked at length about, uh, if nothing else, concrete it may not feel like a lava rock wall, mm -hmm. but it is yes. it is a locally made material. Mm -hmm. yes. um, whether it's poured in place or precast, we can make, it is one of the few things we yeah. don't have yeah, to yeah. import. So Correct. there may be a future in concrete construction. Uh, no, we, there will definitely be a future yeah. in concrete We think so. So it's yeah. the evolution of, of the tropical brutalism. We have a lot of basalt here. We do. Yeah. We, do. We, are, we are getting and new basalt all the time. Not at the moment, yeah, yeah. but we just no. got a whole bunch yeah. more new basalt. And I like, I just got the notice that we're at the end of the show, so I need to somehow Get phase us out, out but yeah. I, I like that you actually centered in your description, you centered the social aspect of that, and that's yes. something that I heard you say a lot, mm. where brutalism comes from. It has a very sort of social, socialist approach, Absolutely. right? Yeah. It's about the people and it's about civic, you know, mm -hmm. engagement, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're doing. And I think coming full circle, that's also, well, thanking you for having, you know, inspired this great discussion, discourse, you know, spinning off the article. And I, I like that this sort of the medium you were using has the same approach and being very proletarian and being inclusive because I bought my copy at Saveway and you can buy it at Long Drugs mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's not like a boutique, you know, no. an, an exclusive thing. It's, it's like when people buy their groceries, they pick this up. So it's very sort of, you know, easy to digest, but yet very rich of nutrients, I would say, as tropical brutalism is. We also said the closer you get, the more you see, you see the substance. So again, it seems like the, you know, the total piece of artwork from, from all directions. So thank you for yes. having written the article yes. and for having been here to talk about it. Thank and you. As you can see, you got us going to go mm -hmm. above, above and beyond, and hopefully you guys do too, and, and keep writing the story for your own and help to sort of basically yep. uh, public education about that particular subject matter so yeah. well the more you the more you look the closer you get the more you see that's true of buildings yeah. but it's also true of stories so mm -hmm. that's yeah. true absolutely that's we true great right. right 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 so with that we're at the end of the show next week see you uh back hopefully for an update on the evolution of elevate which is one of the recent plants that are homegrown on the island by Nathan Toothman. And so see where, how, how that went. And, and so until then, please stay very uh, tropically exotic and exotically tropic. Bye-bye. All right, good job. Thank you.